Dear Renée de Bergerac by Edmund Rostand, Act 4. At the end of Act 3, Christian and Roxanne are married. Digish is really mad about that. And so he, being the colonel now, decides to send Christian and Cyrano off to war. And they need to leave that night. Welcome to Cyrano de Bergerac by Edmund Rostand, Act 4. Here we are at the Siege of Arras. The soldiers are surrounded by Spaniards and they're lacking in food and water and some of them are terribly sick. We have Carbone and Le Bray who are looking um, during the night watch. So it's early, early morning and they hear gunfire out in the distance. Well, in comes Cyrano. He has crossed enemy lines to deliver a letter to Roxanne from Christian, of course. So they find out that Cyrano has been risking his life to deliver these letters to Roxanne. And Cyrano looks over at the sleeping Christian and he says that Christian, even though he's dying of hunger, is still handsome in his sleep. So the morning arrives and Cyrano decides to go write another letter to Roxanne. He goes off to write a letter and the cadets start waking up and they start complaining about their hunger and how miserable they are. And there's this talk of mutiny, that they are going to have an open rebellion and not fight this war. And so Carbone asks Cyrano for some help. And Cyrano gives a speech about home and he has the piper play a song from Provence. And all of the cadets start getting tearful and they're super homesick. And so even though now all of the cadets are super sad, they have forgotten about their hunger. Well, in walks De Guiche, and they're moping around, and everyone's really resentful of De Guiche because they're fighting this war. And Cyrano tells them, stop moping and act really busy. Well, De Guiche becomes very boastful and starts talking about the battle the day before. De Guiche says that he was wearing his white sash that marks him as an officer, and he took it off to confuse the Spaniards. Well, Cyrano points out anybody who was really brave would have left that sash on. And guess what? Next time we're on the battlefield, I'll wear it. And De Guiche says, well, you only say that because you know it's out on the battlefield and you can't really wear that. You're really not that brave. And Cyrano pulls the sash out of his pocket, proving De Guiche wrong. De Guiche is furious and he goes and takes the sash and he waves it at a guard over the Spanish encampment. And de Guiche then claims that he has just given the signal that the Spanish will attack right there where all those cadets are in about an hour. And that has given the, the French some t a little bit of time. But in the process, all of those cadets will die. Cyrano thanks de Guiche solemnly and says that he appreciates the opportunity to die with glory. Well, Christian realizes, I've got to write a letter to Roxanne. This is my last day. I'm going to die. And Cyrano says, don't worry. I've already produced it. And as Christian's looking at this letter, he notices a teardrop. And he says, wait a second. You, you produced a tear while writing this. And as he's trying to ask him, Cyrano doesn't have a chance to answer yet because up comes a coach. Nobody's expecting this. And de Guiche thinks that it might be the king's service. But Roxanne and Ragano appear in that coach. So Roxanne gets down from the coach and she says, the war is lasting too long and I had to see Christian. Well, de Guiche, Cyrano, and Christian are all very upset. They know that Spain will attack them in less than an hour and that Roxanne's life is endangered. Remember, all three of them love her. And she says, well, I'm going to stay. You can't make me leave. I'm Cyrano's cousin, and I'm brave just like he is. Well, Cyrano stays, and Christian stay, but de Guiche is really mad, and he goes off angrily. At this point, Carbon presents the company to Roxanne, and Roxanne presents a wonderful meal that Ragano has prepared for everybody. And all the soldiers are so thrilled. And they eat, and they're just feeling so much better. 
And then Dagish comes back and everybody hides all the food because they hate him. And Dagish says, you know what? If Roxanne's going to stay here for this fight, for this battle, I'm going to stay. I'm going to fight too. And they all start thinking, well, maybe he's actually not such a bad guy. Maybe he is a guest gone after all. And then they offer him some food and he says, no, I'm not going to take any food. And then they're even more impressed. Well, Cyrano keeps trying to talk to Christian because now that Roxanne's here, <laughs> he needs Christian to know that he's been writing her letters uh, every day, not just once in a while. So he says, um, so you've been writing her a lot more than you thought. And Christian is catching on to what's really happening. And he's suspicious that Cyrano truly loves Roxanne. Christian asks Roxanne, why did you risk your life to come see me? And she says, well, I am so in love with you through your letters. At first, I really only loved you for who you were on the outside. I loved how handsome you were. But now I truly love you, your soul. I love you through your letters, which is really Cyrano, right? And Christian realizes this and he feels miserable she says, I would love you even if you were ugly. That doesn't matter. I don't care about the outside. So Christian says, go uh, smile at the cadets. They're about to die. And he sends her over here. And then he's talking to Cyrano. And he says, Roxanne's no longer in love with me. She loves my soul, which is you. And he accuses Cyrano of secretly returning her love, and Cyrano does not deny it. So the truth is out for Christian. And Christian says that Cyrano now must tell Roxanne the truth and make her choose between the two of them. And Christian calls Roxanne over. Well, Christian calls Roxanne over, and he goes off with the cadets. And while they're talking, Cyrano asks Roxanne, well, you love him so much. Would you love him if he weren't as handsome as he is? And she says, yes, I could love him, even if he were not so handsome. And Cyrano feels ecstatic. Well, that means that she could love him. And he's just about to reveal, here's the truth. I've written the letters. But he doesn't get to. Lebray calls him over. Where'd Lebray go? Lebray calls him over, and he whispers something in his ear. And Cyrano realizes, I can never tell Roxanne the truth because a group of men comes in and they bring in the dying body of Christian. He ended up fighting and he's wounded. So Christian is dying. The cadets go off to fight. Roxanne faints on top of Christian's body and Cyrano whispers to Christian that he has told Roxanne the secret and that she has chosen Christian and she loves Christian. Fighting breaks out all around them and uh, Christian dies. Roxanne sees next to his heart is the letter that Cyrano has written that Christian was going to mail as the last letter. And Roxanne faints. Well, Cyrano gets Ragano and De Guiche to take Roxanne and make sure that she is safe. So they go away. Cyrano is approached by Carbone, who has been wounded twice and says, Cyrano, you've got to come help us. If we hold out a little bit longer, I think we'll be okay. And Cyrano says that now I have two deaths to avenge. Two deaths. He basically was both of these people. So he's avenging Christian's death and he's avenging his own death because he died with Christian. He can never tell Roxanne that he loved her, that it was him writing those letters and he charges into battle and then he hears a Spaniard say who are all these men who are eager so eager for death and Cyrano begins to sing the song of the cadets of Gascon 
uh, he charges into battle. There's bullets flying and he sings as he fights. So courageous, so brave, avenging the two deaths. And that ends Act 4 of Cyrano de Bergerac.